So before we start, I just want to point out the fact that this is sort of how I envision doing stoichiometry problems. You have to go through moles of one thing to moles of another. And you can start with either um, grams or a volume in order to get those moles, or you may just already be given moles. And once you find moles of the other thing you're searching for, you can figure out how many grams or um, what volume you have of that. You could also figure out how many molecules you have here. And as we get into gases, there's another way to look at that too. But I just want to start that out as this is sort of where my foundation is. So let's do some examples. We're starting in grams and we need to end in volume. So we need to convert to moles of zinc, then moles of HCl, and finally milliliters of HCl. We know we have to go from moles of zinc into moles of HCl, and we do that through the balanced equation. We're going to go from volume of A to volume of B, and that means we need to go through moles and moles as well. So we do that through the concentration. So in this question, it's asking you how many milliliters of 12.0 molar HCl are required to completely react with 10 grams of zinc. Remember, before we start anything else, we need a balanced equation. So let's start by balancing this equation. I see that I have two hydrogens over here, so I'm going to put a two in front of the HCl. And that actually balances because we now have two, H two chlorines on the other side, and then we have an equal amount of zinc on each side as well. So that would be a balanced equation at this point. Sorry, let me put that back. Okay, so now what we need to figure out is what we have and where we're going. We know that we have 10.0 grams of zinc, and we're asked what volume in milliliters we need of HCl. So if we look back to the chart, so we need to start off by knowing what the molar mass is of zinc. And that happens to be 65.41 grams per mole. So now that we have our tools, we can now figure out where to go. So we start with 10.0 grams of zinc and multiply this by the molar mass. If you want to go back to the chart, you can see that that's how we're getting to moles of zinc. So 65.41 grams per mole of zinc. Then, so for every one mole of zinc, I have two moles of HCl. So one mole zinc 2 moles HCl. Next, I need to use the molarity that is provided with HCl. We know here that we have 12 moles per liter because remember, 12 molar, that's what it means. It means 12.0 moles per liter. And you can use that with either one on top. So that's still something that we can do is flip that number if needed. So this is gonna give me the liters of HCl that I need. Now, the answer asked for things in milliliters. You can either convert that now or later, but I figure we might as well go ahead and do that now. So for every one liter, there are 1,000 milliliters. When you put that in your calculator, you should get that you have 25.5 milliliters. So what that means is that there are 25.5 milliliters of HCl of, I should say, 12.0 um, molar HCl that are needed 
to react in full with 10 grams of zinc. Let's try this problem. Next, we're asked what volume, that means that we've got to do liters or milliliters, of 0 0.250 molar KCl solution is required to completely react with 0 0.150 liter of a 0.175 molar PBNO32 solution. So before we start with this, we need to first start, just like we did last time, with a balanced reaction. So let's see. To do that, I see that I have two CLs over here. So I need to go and put a two in front of that, which gives me two Ks. So I need to put a two in front of that. And then let's check the NO3s is already there. So we're good. PBs are balanced on each side. We're set to go. In this case, since we're not converting anything from grams, we don't even need to figure out molar mass because we're already given molarities. So if we're looking at our chart right now, so here we go. Let's start with the thing that we know. And we know this up here. So we know that we're starting with 0 0.150 liters. And we have 0 0.175 moles of PBNO32 per liter of PBNO32. Now make sure that this is actually what you're starting with and those two things are related to the same solution and they are in this case, so we're good. Next, we need, this is going to put us in moles of PBNO3, and we need to know what the relationship is between PBNO3 and, in this case, we're going to KCl. So, for every one mole of PBNO3, two, we have two moles of KCl. Now we need to go to from moles of KCl into volume of KCl. And we know that this solution is 0 0.250 moles per liter. So we need to again flip this value in order to get our final amount in liters. So we have 0.250 moles of KCl per liter of KCl. And when you do that calculation, I hope that you find that that is 0 0.0113 liters. Or if you divide and do this into milliliters, you'll find that you have 11.3 milliliters. Either one would be totally fine, but that is of 0 0.250 molar KCO is needed. Okay, good. Are we ready for another problem that's more of a limiting reagent problem? By the way, it's actually easier in solution, I think, um, because Notice here we didn't have to calculate molar mass, so there's a little bit less um, calculation that you need to do. Okay, so sorry about this. Let me just scratch through up here. And let's do this example problem of how many grams of barium sulfate form, in other words, we're looking for grams of this in the end, when you add 35 milliliters of 0.160 molar barium chloride, and you react that with 57 milliliters of 0.065 molar sodium sulfate. So make sure that you know that these values go together and these values go together. Just like we've done before, we need to start with a balanced equation. So I see that I have two chlorines over here. I'm gonna put a two in front of my NaCl. That's actually gonna balance out my Na as well. 
and we have a balanced equation now. So you're looking for grams of barium sulfate. And just like before, when we did limiting reagent problems, you're given a starting amount of both BACL2 and Na2SO4. So individually, we need to figure out how many grams of barium sulfate you can make given both of the individual values that you have for BACL2 and Na2SO4. So let's do that. Let's say that we're doing one problem here and another problem here, okay? So the first thing is that we have to convert milliliters to liters. I hope that you all are starting to get to where you can do that in your head now. If not, feel free to do that in, um, you know, in mathematical forms. But that is 0 0.035 liters. Just divide it by 1,000. And remember that 0 0.160 molar means that we have 0 0.160 moles per liter. And the same thing over here with our sodium sulfate. 57 milliliters is 0 0.057 mil liters. Sorry. And the 0 0.065 is 0 0.065 moles per liter. Sorry if those are um, a little bit small. So I'm gonna start with barium chloride. We have 0 0.035 liters, and we're gonna multiply that so that for every liter, we have 0 0.160 moles of BACL2. Now I didn't write out that this was BACL2, but that is also BACL2. So feel free to do that, that's actually better. I'm just afraid of running out of space on this, this platform. Okay, now we need our molar ratios. So for every one mole of BACL2, we get one mole of BASO4. Now it does turn out, since we're going into grams of barium sulfate, we need to know the molar mass there. So I'm just gonna give that to you. The molar mass of BASO4 is two, oh sorry, 233.37 grams per mole. So here we go, we're gonna put um, moles of BASO4 on bottom, and we're gonna convert that to grams on top. So 233.37 grams goes on top. And this is gonna give us 1.3 grams of BASO4. Next, we're gonna do the same type of thing with sodium sulfate. So here we're given 0 0.057 liters. And again, that is of sodium sulfate. I'm just afraid of running out of space. So I'm going to say that that is um, in one liter, we've got 0 0.065 moles of Na2SO4. So we now need to convert two moles of barium sulfate. So one mole of BASO4 is there for every one mole of Na2SO4. And finally, we need to take this into grams of BASO4. So we again multiply times the molar mass And that should give you 0 0.86 grams of BASO4. Which means that if we're looking for the limiting reagent, whatever we started with here, which was Na2SO4, is our limiting reagent. And our theoretical yield, the amount that we can actually get, is 0.86 grams of BASO4. So the question the answer to the question should be 0 0.86 grams of BASO4. And that's how you approach these problems. I would definitely recommend you go back and um, try to do these on your own. 
just to make sure that you can do them as well. And that way you have, you know, help doing the solutions. Thank you.